Good morning, friends, and welcome. I am Connie Hardison, and it is my pleasure to serve on the board at Capital City Unity. Today, we are continue joining with other churches with virtual services to come together to do what we do best, and that is to pray and center ourselves in love and prayer. While we do miss seeing each other and sharing with one another in person, during these times, we can still connect and be a powerful intention and voice for truth. This is a time of great initiation for the people of our world on this planet, so we must be supportive of one another. If you are new to Capital City Unity, we bless and welcome you. We know who you are. You are a child of God. If you would like to know more about us, you can check our website at capitalcityunity.org, where you will find a link to our YouTube past meditations and lessons. Or please email us at capitalcityunity at gmail.com to be placed on our mailing list. Here is the flow of today's phone-in church service. We'll have the reading of the daily word. We'll do our affirmations. Then we will bless the names of the people in the prayer box. And please email us if you have someone or something that you would like us to pray for. We'll have our meditation. And then we'll have Marty's message. We'll do the offering. And then we'll have our wonderful prayer the light of God surrounds us. That's so powerful that we do together at the end of the service. So I invite you to enjoy this beautiful day. And although we continue to be physically apart, we can never truly be apart in spirit. We can still enjoy walking in the beautiful nature and find other ways to stay healthy at home or outside and yet stay connected to others as we are connecting with you. That connection, as we know, is so important for the well-being of all of us. For we believe and we frequently affirm, whenever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. And now I will read the daily word. Today's daily word is so appropriate, as Claudia was saying, and is entitled, Pray for Others. I affirm the truth for everyone I hold in prayer. I am honored by the trust people place in me when they ask for prayer support. As I pray for others, I see each one for whom I pray as divine and know the truth that each one is a living expression of God. My purpose in prayer is not to focus on the particulars of a situation, but to hold a higher view. As I center in prayer, I hold the vision that all challenging circumstances are moving toward a satisfying resolution in one way or another. I release all thoughts about the situation that prompted the prayer need and focus on the activity of God. As I pray, I see the life, the love, the wisdom, and the power of God at work, healing, strengthening, and establishing peace in all those for whom I pray. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. And it is with these words and in this consciousness that we bless the names of all the people and the pets in the prayer box, knowing as we speak our affirmations and pray today, we hold them in that healing light of love and peace. We continue to bless our healthcare workers and our frontline people, anyone who makes our world safer today. We continue blessing our store clerks, truck drivers, farmers, who are part of an important distribution system for our health and well-being. And we bless our political figures and our teachers and our children, 
We bless all people. We ask for your guiding light to be with them always for healing and the right outworking in any and all situations for the highest good. And we say, there is only one presence and one power, one love active in your lives. God, the good, omnipotent. Let's affirm that together. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in your lives. God, the good, omnipotent. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry. God, the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry, God, the good, omnipotent. And there is only one presence, one power, one love active in the world today, God, the good, omnipotent. Please say that with me. There is only one presence, one power, one love active in the world today, God, the good, omnipotent. And we pray, O loving presence, comfort and heal those who have been touched by disease or disharmony, whether they are in our family, our community, our state, our nation, and our world. Immerse them in love and lead them through this dark time and into the light. Give them the peace that passes understanding and let them know that they are loved and love always prevails. Thank you, God. Amen. Now, rather than having our regular hymn today, we will be having the instrumental of a beautiful little song written by Neil Diamond and inspired by the movie E. Our meditation today is taken from former Naval Commander, author, speaker, Unity Talk show host, medium, Suzanne Giesman. Sit quietly, feet flat on the floor, your arms uncrossed, your palms face up or face down in your lap. Slowly draw in a breath, hold for a few counts, and let it out as slowly as you took it in. Take in another deep breath, hold it, and as you release it, visualize any negativity and tension flowing out through the soles of your feet being absorbed into the earth. Continue relaxing more and more with the breath and feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into your chair. As your mind slows down and your body relaxes, visualize a shaft of white light coming from above and passing through you and into the ground. Follow that shaft of light with your consciousness to the very center of the earth. Now breathe in and as you do so, breathe the energy of the earth up, up, up from the center and straight into your heart. Exhale normally and comfortably. 
do this again drawing in the energy from mother earth from her center all the way up through the soles of your feet and into your heart when it gets there allow it to continue flowing throughout and beyond your body forming a sphere of loving energy all around you now that you have that flow going visualize a continuous stream from the center of the earth to your heart this flow replenishes and refreshes the earth's energies that make up your physical body feel gratitude for your life and for all of the things on this earth with which you are blessed now move your attention to the realm of spirit move your consciousness high above you as you breathe in draw in the energy of the cosmos that spirit energy from as high as you can travel on that shaft of light all the way down through your head and into your heart repeat the action of inhaling from as high above as possible drawing in with the breath the spirit energies from above directly to your heart as that energy from above reaches your heart allow it to circulate wherever it needs to go within and around your body visualize and feel the flow continuing now with every breath you take inhale again and as you do so visualize the earth's energies and the celestial energies flowing in simultaneously on the breath from below and from above unifying the heart this dual stream balances the energies coming into union at the heart be aware of your consciousness residing in the body but no that this is not the only place it resides see your body sitting within this shaft of light but now move your consciousness above the body shift your awareness to a place about 1 foot above the head but still within the shaft of light visualize yourself dissolving your natural state into your natural state as a particle of light look down at your body it is maintained below you on the chair but you as spirit are everywhere at once now drift down the shaft of life into your body flow past the head and into the chest area feel yourself glide into that sacred heart space How does it feel to be there? All of the energy from below and above flow and join you there. How does it feel? You can sense the head far above you and the feet far below you. They are not the real you. How does the real you feel? dwelling with your consciousness in this sacred space hear these words spirit of a great healer awaken within this heart peace and tranquility flow like water may the light of all that is free my soul and awaken me fully to the truth of who i am i am far more than the physical body I am without form, without limit, beyond space, beyond time. I am in everything and everything is in me. I am the light. I am the light. 
I am the light. This is alignment. This state of being in the heart, no longer prisoner to the head, but in a state of awareness of your true being, a unified whole comprised of the earth energies and spirit energies. You are all of that. Know that you can return to this place of peace, this place of tranquility at any time. Know that here you will always be home. Return here often. This is the real you. Gratitude will bring you here instantly. Come to know it intimately as you kindle more and more flame within you. For now, take a deep cleansing breath and slowly return to full waking consciousness so that we can receive Marty's message. Amen. Thank you, Connie. As always, here at Unity, our talks are just footnotes on the meditation, which is the central experience. And last week, we began to explore this in the context of our metaphysics, and I'd like to continue that. So I invite us to keep that presence that we've experienced for the past 10 minutes in Connie's beautiful meditation. Let this be the foundation of our listening for the next few minutes. As I mentioned last week, we began our review of Unity's understanding of metaphysics by taking a look at the ideas presented by Eric Butterworth, our great Unity teacher. In his book, based on his great lecture series called Practical Metaphysics, A New Idea of Truth. As we said, those of us called to a deeper exploration of his ideas are invited to join our four-week class series on it starting Tuesday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m. And details on how to register are in our weekly e-blast. And I hope as many of us can join as possible. So we saw last week that the word metaphysics derives from two ancient Greek words meaning essentially what, belie, what lies beyond physical or manifest reality. We saw that even the earliest human beings had the sense that something fundamental and real exists behind the everyday struggle for survival, so that when Plato and Aristotle undertook their systematic study of the idea, they were addressing what for them and their societies was a self-evident truth. When the founding fathers and mothers of new thought began to discuss their experiences of what they called the one presence, one power, one love, that always only it is, insisted that we can best appreciate this through direct encounter with it as it shows up in and animates our own lives. We saw that they universally discouraged thinking of metaphysics as an intellectual pursuit. Instead, they urged us to undertake it as a practice, a practice that helps us change consciousness of the ultimate reality in which we move and have our being. Mr. Butterworth directs our attention to what he calls allness. Allness, the omnipresence of divine reality or substance that is everywhere equally present in the universe, as Connie shared in the meditation. And he called our attention to what he calls the eachness that every human expresses of this allness. He says, God is not a person out there. God is a presence that is ever present and all present, or to put it in its most complete sense, God is an allness in which I exist and you exist as an eachness. Don't take that too light. Let that run through your consciousness. God is an allness in which you exist as an eachness. To use the term expression, 
the word expression of God. The word express means to stand forth. I am the allness or the activity of the love and the substance and the life of God standing forth at this point, not in me, not surrounding me, not putting his hands upon me, not guiding me, not directing me. All this, yes, but so much more standing forth as me. God expresses himself as me. This is in contrast to our cultural assumptions in which God personally guides me or directs me. God has his hands on my shoulder. God has the whole world in his hands and all of these things. God's eyes, God's ears, God's mouth, God's feet. All these things which you find in the anthropomorphisms that are expressed, quite frankly, in the Old Testament of the Bible. You see, we need to somehow transcend all this and get the realization of God as an allness in which I exist as an eachness. Mr. Butterworth. So now our challenge, based on what he says, our opportunity is to move this idea from our thinking minds of God as an allness in which I exist as an eachness to realization in our feeling nature, to feel the presence in our bodies and minds right here, right now. Last week, we took the time to practice the presence of God by literally feeling the sensations in our bodies, appreciating that whatever we are feeling anywhere in our physical and emotional bodies is the divine presencing itself through these sensations. Wherever I focus my attention, I am encountering the eachness of the allness of God showing up as what I am seeing in this particular expression. So let's take a moment to do this again, to experience the presence of God. Only this time, instead of concentrating on our physical sensations, let's concentrate on our thoughts. So I invite us to return to this meditative state that Connie helped us create a few moments ago. Let's feel our bodies grow quiet and still. We notice our breath moving slowly in and out of our lungs, up through the nose. We feel our rib cage moving up and down with each breath. Now in this quiet meditative space, let whatever thought wants to presence itself do so. Notice whatever thought comes to mind. It doesn't matter what the thought is because it could be anything. It could range from, I don't believe he's making us do this again, to what time do I need to fire up the barbecue to start dinner this afternoon, to isn't it weird to see baseball teams play in empty stadiums? doesn't matter. Let any and every thought appear. Now let's just become aware that this thought, and now the next thought, is God presencing itself as this thought, and now the next thought. Whatever I'm thinking, God is thinking it through and as me. I invite us to focus as deeply as we can inside our minds. Focus on where the thoughts are coming from. Find the source of the thinking by sensing it as a specific point. When I do this, for me, thoughts seem to come from right in the center of my skull. Let's focus for a moment on where thoughts are coming from within you. Whatever, wherever the thoughts might spring from, and whatever they might be saying, they are God presencing itself as this mental activity, as thinking. Mr. Butterworth says, this allness is all present and totally present. The prominent English New Thought teacher, Thomas Troward, offered us a concept which I refer to as the unity principle. Troward says, Wherever spirit is at all, the whole of spirit must be. Now, the word 
appropriate terms as a synonym for God, or if you will, for the universe, because I see the universe as a synonym for God. Wherever spirit is at all, the whole of spirit must be. Spirit is wholeness. But then he says, because spirit is omnipresent, the whole of spirit must be present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time. Now just think about that. The whole must be present. Ani shared that with us in her meditation. The whole is present everywhere. So in our little meditation noticing our thoughts, all of God was and is totally present. It's all that is. And we've let our habits of emotion and thought disguise this, and over time our beliefs have gravitated towards separation and limitation, so that now we have us some work to do. And at the same time, since God is omnipresent, we also have no work to do. Because, as Mr. Butterworth tells us again and again, the whole of spirit must be present in its entirety at every point in space at the same time. The whole ball of wax, everything, totality. The whole of infinite mind is present at the point of my mind. God is mind, and God doesn't give ideas. God is the allness of the infinite mind process, which is present in its entirety at every point in space, which means right here as your mind. Your mind, then, is open as an extension of, an expression of, an identity within the all-knowing infinite mind of God. And it's nowhere else. There's nowhere to go. You can't go to a shrine and get any closer. You can't go to church and get any closer. You always have it with you. You can't get out of it. But wherever spirit is at all, the whole must be. The whole spirit, the whole of healing the whole of substance, the whole of guidance, the whole of prosperity, the whole of creativity is present because you're present. It encapsulates the essence of unity's metaphysics. The allness of the divine, the one, the totality, is completely and comprehensively present throughout all of reality, and strictly speaking, also throughout all unreality are completely and comprehensively present in me, in you, in each and every one of us, in every moment. Let's let that sink in, and let's affirm, I am the allness of God. The eachness of God is me. Whatever I am feeling and thinking is God feeling and thinking. I'll break that down and ask you to repeat that after me. First of all, let's affirm, I am the allness of God. Together, I am the allness of God. The eachness of God is me. Together, the eachness of God is me. Whatever I am feeling and thinking is God feeling and thinking. Together. Whatever I am feeling and thinking is God feeling and thinking. And so what we can infer from what we've just done is that practicing our metaphysics always starts with We start with whatever we are feeling and thinking in any given moment. As an eachness of the allness of God, spirit fully concentrated in our current experience, we need only focus on what is presencing itself in us right now. And as we do this, we simply open, like the petals of the rose in the spring, into the experience of God vibrating through our bodies and minds. We experience the sunshine and the shadows in which we sit still and know. Just this is divine. I am divine. All this is divine. What is familiar to me is divine. What is foreign to me is divine. My dearest one is the Christ. My most diabolical enemy is the Christ. My negative thoughts are righteous. My compassion is righteous. 
If all of God is entirely present in myself, then all of humanity is entirely present within myself. My ancestors, my contemporaries, my children and grandchildren unto the hundredth generation, all are divinely present here and now in my personal experience. The allness of God is in the eachness of me. Now, to get at this, I want to share a poem from one of America's greatest poets, Walt Whitman, who was friend to Ralph Waldo Emerson and Abraham Lincoln, who was contemporary of our New Thought founders. And he understood the truth of this omnipresence and, and sought to capture it in its outstanding joy and power in his great poem, Song of Myself. It's a long and quite articulate expression of the divine presence, and I recommend it to all of us. I'm just going to read the conclusion of the poem and see if you can feel what he is trying to communicate of the omnipresence of God as he is experiencing it. This is what he says. And as to you, life, I reckon you are less. No doubt I have died myself 10,000 times before. I hear you whispering there, O oh stars of heaven, O oh suns, O oh grass of graves, O oh perpetual transfers and promotions. If you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends the steeps of the so suing twilight, toss sparkles of day and dusk, toss on the black stems that decay in the muck, Tossed to the moaning gibberish of the dry limbs. I ascend from the moon. I ascend from the night. I perceive that the ghastly glimmer is noonday sunbeams reflected and debouched to the steady and central from the offspring great or small. There is that in me. I do not know what it is, but I know it is in me. Wrenched and sweaty, calm and cool then my body becomes. I sleep. I sleep long. I do not know it. It is without name. It is a word unsaid. It is not in any dictionary, utterance, symbol. Something it swings on more than the earth I swing on. To it, the creation is the friend whose embracing awakens me. Perhaps I might tell more. Outlines I plead for my brothers and sisters. Do you see, O oh, my brothers and sisters? It is not chaos or death. It is form, union, plan. It is eternal life. It is happiness. The past and present wilt. I have filled them, emptied them, and proceed to fill my next fold of the future. Listener up there, what have you to confide to me? Look in my face while I snuff the sidle of evening. Talk honestly. No one else hears you. And I stay only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done his day's work? Who will soonest be through with his supper? Who wishes to walk with me? Will you speak before I am gone? Will you prove already too late? The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I, too, am not a bit tamed. I, too, am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yawp over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back from me. It flings my likeness upon the rest. And true as any of the shadows wilds, it coaxes me to the vapors and the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks. At the runaway sun, I fuse my flesh and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere, 
waiting for you. Our nation's greatest poet, seeking to express the omnipresence of God. Whitman belonged to that great generation of our American transcendentalists like Emerson and Thoreau, who inspired our New Thought founders like Phineas Quimby, Mary Baker Eddy, Emma Curtis Hopkins, the Fillmores, Emily Cady, and all their great colleagues of the 19th century. Like Whitman, they trembled with the experience of the omnipresence of God, quivering in their bodies, straining in their thoughts, pulsing in their intuitions. They worked assiduously, hour by hour, day by day, to open their minds and beliefs to the reality of what that omnipresence is always promising and always delivering. Whatever I'm experiencing now as I bring the sharing to a close is God, God loving, caressing, approving me. Whatever you are experiencing as you listen to and reflect on these words, God is embracing, enjoying, delighting in you. So let's let Eric Butterworth have the last word for today. He says this, ask yourself this remembering that you are not simply flesh, that you're not simply dwelling in a hostile environment. You're not simply a person who's in this experience of life at the mercy of the whim and circumstance of the change in human events, but you are an individualized expression of the divine process expressing as you. You are tremendous potentialities for releasement and for growth. Who do you think you are? I am. I am, and I am divinely, divine potentiality expressing as me. I am the Christ, the son of the living God. I would like you to, Butterworth says, if you literally go through this exercise, see yourself, Carefully look beyond the appearance and say, I am the Christ, the living son or the da living daughter of God. Figuratively, in a time of meditation or sitting at your desk at the office or in your garden or wherever else you find yourself becoming surrounded by hostile experiences and feel the tensions and pressures, just close your eyes for a moment. Look into a figurative mirror and say, who do you think you are? And then respond, I am. I am one. I am whole. I am the eachness within the allness of God. I am an individualized expression of the divine potentiality that is limitless. I am the Christ, the son of the living God. This can be as a healing treatment but it can also redirect our whole attitude toward ourselves and toward life. So let's take a moment to take him up on his challenge here. Let's close our eyes and picture ourselves seeing ourselves in a mirror. And let us affirm, I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Together. I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. And let's notice whatever energetic feeling that brings forward in us. For me, I feel a sense of fluttering in my chest and know that that sense is God presencing itself in me as me whatever you are experiencing, as you affirm, I am the Christ, the son of the living God. God is expressing, caressing, loving you, just as you are. And for this presence, this omnipresence, this presence that is always reminding us of who we are, we say, thank you, God. Amen. So now's our opportunity to 
share our prosperity with this ministry. Prosperity consists of this allness of God of which we are each the eachness. And as the eachness of God, we share in the unlimited availability of all substance. Whatever I need is always available to me. And I am happy to share my prosperity with this ministry, with my brothers and sisters who are here together on this platform, knowing that the sufficiency of my life is the sufficiency of God. And so we take our offerings into our hands, either literally or figuratively, and we affirm that these offerings are the concrete expression of this infinite prosperity that we each participate in by virtue of being God's eachness. And we bless our offering with our affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. God is the source and I am the channel. Thank you, God. Amen. This is a special invitation. As always, I like to offer to you to join us in our midweek prayer service every Thursday, this coming Thursday morning at nine o'clock using the same call in. And again, I remind you, if this conversation about practicing the presence of God through our Metaphysics calls to you. Please register for our class on practical metaphysics, which will start Tuesday, August the 4th. Registration information will come out in the e-blast. And now let's stand and form a virtual circle. Grab the hand of the person nearest you. See each other in our mind's eye looking around this beautiful virtual church we're, and we're going to sing our song, Love is the Only Power, Love is the Only Way. Gordon? And now as I unmute everybody, I want to give a shout out to my friend, Victoria in Costa Rica. Good to see you with us. So we're in international service. Uh -huh. And now let us join together our voices, presence in God, our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God, the light of God. Light of God. around us. The power of God, Thank you, Marty. Thank you.